Welcome to The Herbal Ire, your podcast on all things holistic health, medical astrology, spirituality, herbalism, and so much more. Presented by your host, Ayer Atla, medical astrologist, herbalist, and naturopath. Let's dive right into today's topic, love and light. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Herbal Ayer. I'm your host, Ayer Atla, and today we are going to be finishing the last in the Keys to Happy Healthy Hormone series. So the, today will be six instead of five because it's a weird number that I have total and it doesn't split, you know, evenly into three episodes. So we will be doing the last six of these Um keys to happy healthy hormones for you today. So let's jump right in and get started. So key number 11 is eat mindfully. And I know you're probably sitting there like, what does that even mean? So let me explain. When we are eating on the go, like we're in our car and we're eating whatever we picked up to get to our next destination, when we have the TV going and we're watching that, or we're on our phone scrolling while eating, we are not really paying attention to what we're eating or how we're eating it or how we're chewing it or all of that stuff, right? Hormonal imbalance can come from many different things, but some of it too is from poor nutrition, meaning you're not getting as much um, nutritional um, dense food, nutrient dense food that you need, or you're not digesting it as you should. So that can happen when we're not paying attention to how we're eating and what we're eating. So when you go to eat your food, you want to make sure that you're sitting still in one place, that we're not driving, we're not watching TV, we're not scrolling through our phone. And trust me, I am guilty of all three of those. So don't sit here and think that I am, you know, coming at you from my high horse and I'm better than you at this because I am not. I am still a human being and I am not always 100% on any of this stuff that I am telling you. Um, but the best practice is to sit still in one spot, turn off the TV, put your phone away, sit with your meal in front of you before you start, take a few deep breaths, practice gratitude. So say thank you to whomever you wish for the food and then eat slowly and eat to the point where like you're really paying attention to the taste and focus on the sensation of eating. You want to chew your food slowly and completely. Digestion actually starts in the mouth. As you're chewing, that mixes saliva in with it, and saliva has enzymes in it that start the breakdown of food process. If you're not chewing your food thoroughly enough, that is breaking down the process of digestion, and your stomach is then doing work that it's not really designed to do, and so then you're not breaking the food down properly in a way to absorb all the nutrients from it that you need. So making sure that you're basically chewing your food until it's mush and then swallowing it is good. And then don't just gobble the food down. So when you finish the bite, rest for about five seconds, take a break for that five seconds, and then take another bite and start all over again. And I know this sounds like, oh my God, it's going to take me forever to eat a meal. Yes. Yes. And that's fine. I am the world's slowest eater and I don't care anymore. I used to feel like, oh my God, I got to rush because everyone else is done. Nope. Nope. My body, my digestion, my health is more important than someone else deciding that they're so busy that they can't spend 20 more minutes with me while I finish eating. So it's okay to eat slow. In fact, it's best to eat slow. You need to do whatever is necessary to slow down and support the digestion process. When foods are processed correctly, digested properly, hormone health is so much better. All right, key number 12. You're going to want to start tracking your cycle if you haven't already, because key number 12 is decrease your exercise intensity and focus on light, frequent movement during the luteal and menstruation phases of your cycle. 
So if you're not tracking your cycle, you wouldn't know when these are. So it's definitely step number one in there is to track your menstrual cycle. And even if you're not bleeding, which is the menstruation phase, then you are still having a menstrual cycle. Your menstrual cycle doesn't stop just because you're not having an actual period. And I know that's really confusing to so many because we're not taught about our menstrual cycles as we should be. But you have four phases to your menstrual cycles, and I have a whole course on this. So if you're more interested in learning more and really diving deep into this, then I highly recommend that course. Um, you can find it. Oh, I don't think it's on my website. It was on my website. Um, I might have to put it back on my website. But there is, if you're interested, let me know. I will send you the link for it. But excessive cardio during the luteal and menstruation phases actually puts a lot of stress on your body, which results in more inflammation and in turn then hormonal imbalances. So your luteal phase is the 7 to 14 days prior to your period starting. This is the phase where if things are imbalanced, you're going to know it because you're going to have PMS symptoms and cravings and bloating and cramping and that just generally miserable feeling. And this is not normal in case you're wondering. This is a sign that your body is either having a hormonal imbalance or it's not getting enough of something that it needs. And in my course, um, Nutrition for Happy Healthy Hormones, it really sets out for you exactly what you need to be eating when and not eating but eating more of not the only things you should be eating but what you should be eating more of in each phase to make sure that you're getting the proper nutrition for that phase and then the one coming up so that you don't deal with these symptoms anymore so um that one is super helpful for helping that process and helping you figure out how to do that so instead of running or doing all kinds of whatever you normally do that's very cardio excessive during this time. You want to prioritize frequent movements. So get out and take a walk, work in your garden that day, go get outside and, you know, walk down that trail that you've been wanting to do for a while. Just stuff that's a little more frequent. And then you want to also do lighter intensity workouts like weighted lifting, yoga, um, hatha yoga is especially good, tai chi, um, and a lot of walking during this time as well. So those are all good things to be doing during those two phases. During your follicular and ovulatory phases where you have a ton of energy and your body is in a different place, go for all the cardio then. But during the last two phases, you really want to kind of slow down and just lean into being instead of doing. All right, key number 13. You want to prioritize stress management. Stress is one of the biggest problem makers in your body for pretty much any health issue, but especially your hormones, because stress can actually interfere with the communication between our brain and our reproductive system, which then results in poor ovulatory function and in turn then decreased hormone production. So it's like a vicious circle that we get ourselves into. So finding ways to manage your stress daily, however that looks for you, meditation, exercise, daily movement, um, journaling, simply taking time out for self-care of some kind, um, learning to say no to things that you really shouldn't be doing. Like you don't need to go to, you know, 17 different things a day or hang out with people that exhaust you, you know, every week. If that stuff is tiring and you need a break, then say no. Saying no and learning to say no and not feeling guilty about it is one of the best stress reducers that you can possibly have. So just learn to say no more and learn to prioritize you over everybody else. It's not selfish and it's not wrong to prioritize you and your health. In fact, it's a necessity because if you don't prioritize you and your health, who's going to? So focus on you, prioritize you, and everything else will fall into place like it should. You can also use some adaptogenic herbs at this point. Um, those are like um, ashwagandha, astragalus, um, go-to cola. Um, 
There are ones that I don't recommend really taking without being monitored by a herbalist as they can have some weird reactions in the fact that they might have the opposite of what you're looking for, or they may depress your system more than you're expecting because it's trying to calm things down. And then you may be falling asleep at the wheel while driving. So um, I highly recommend that when you're starting them, that you do work with someone, someone qualified to determine which one is best for you and the proper dosages and things like that. And once you figure out what works for your body, then you can probably manage it on your own. But in the meantime, when you're first starting, you know, please reach out to someone qualified to help you get the proper amount for you. All right, key number 14, avoid endocrine disrupting chemicals. <laughs> and you're probably wondering what these are. These are chemicals that are found in a lot of products that we as women tend to use a lot of more so than other people. And they are also found in our food, unfortunately. A lot of the um, pesticides and herbicides and things that they use like that actually are absorbed into our food. And then we eat them and then they disrupt our body. And also um, the worst offending endocrine disrupting chemical out there is birth control. It is the, one of the worst ones. It really fucks up your system and it really disrupts how your body is supposed to work and in turn leads to other issues like thyroid health issues, um, low libido. It can lead to gut imbalances, which then leads to depression and anxiety. And so it can lead to a whole host of problems that is just, in my opinion, not worth dealing with when there's other more natural safe methods for birth control that don't include disrupting your entire body. So. Um, you can find which products are better on the website, the e uh, EWC website. They are really good at that. They can tell you um, which ones are better choices. So you really want to start switching out your common beauty and household products that you use with more natural ones that are better for you. Um, many of the beauty products and cleaning products and shampoos and soaps that we use um, actually interfere with our natural hormone balance. Many mimic estrogen, which can contribute to estrogen dominance issues, which can lead to issues like endometriosis, um, PCOS, PMS symptoms, heavy periods, clotty periods, uh, PMS, cramping, sore breasts, bloating, all kinds of things that are not normal to have during your menstrual cycle. So you want to really opt for natural or homemade products that are free of parabens, um, phthalates, preservatives, and other toxic chemicals. So, and especially opt for other forms of birth control that are not hormonal. All right, number 15. This is my favorite one, and I'm pretty sure it's the favorite of many of my clients, but have sex or have orgasms on a pretty regular basis. And by regular, I mean almost daily. <laughs> so sex, intimacy, and orgasms are super important for horm hormone balance. They support the production of oxytocin, and that can help relieve stress, and it can actually boost fertility. The more orgasms you have, the more regulated your cycles become, the more regulated your hormone production comes because your body is forced to make proper amounts of hormones when you're having those. So it does not have to be with a partner if, you know, you don't have a partner or that just doesn't sound like you want to have fun with a partner today, which I get. There's totally, you know, moments where I'm like, oh, that does not sound like fun. <laughs> but so orgasms in general are very good. So have fun, explore your body, learn what you like, learn what feels good for you and have those orgasms every single day or every other day. This is your permission to have as many orgasms as you want a week because they are good for your fucking health. All right, and last one, key number 16, tune into your feminine energy. Society nowadays is 
promotes busyness and hustling and you have to have three jobs and one of those better be a side hustle where you're building a business for yourself and you have to be doing all of that while raising your children be if you have them because you know that's what we as women are supposed to do is raise the kids and then you're supposed to take care of the whole household and you're supposed to make sure everybody gets to all their appointments on time and the kids are all at 17 different after school activities or else they're not getting enough socialization or they're going to turn out to be non-productive you know adults of society and you know you have to have like six pets at the same time too because animals are good for kids and they're good for your health and just saying all that it makes me feel super exhausted so learning to let go of those expectations and not giving a single fuck about whether or not you're fitting in with societal expectations is one of the best things you can ever do for your overall health and especially your hormonal health. Let go of that masculine energy need to go, 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 hustle, 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 keep up with the Joneses, all of that bullshit. It's very counterproductive to how our bodies as biological women function, and it's very counterproductive to how we should live our lives in general. We are not made to hustle, hustle, hustle all the time. Our bodies need rest. And if you're not getting proper rest, then you're not healing. You're not making proper amounts of hormones. You're not having good digestion. You're not feeling good. And so learning to slow down, tune into your sensuality, your creativity, learning to enjoy your hobbies and not caring if these hobbies aren't making you any money, that you're just doing it for fun, not caring about what society says if your kids aren't in 17 different after-school activities weekly, not caring if you have a side hustle or three jobs, not caring, learning to not care and just learn to be and be more, do less is not easy. I will be the first to say it, but it's necessary if you want to heal. So go at a pace that flows with you instead of against you and your feminine energy. So learning to flow with how your body goes. And this is why it's so good to track your cycles. Because when you track your cycle, you will realize that you are a very cyclical being and how your body wants to be is different during each phase of your cycle. So for the follicular phase, you may notice that you have a lot of energy and creativity and you have all these ideas that are pouring out and things you want to start. And so that is the perfect time to do those things because you have that energy and you have that creativity. And then in your ovulatory phase, you may notice that you still have some good energy, but now you want to lean more into like doing your hobbies or spending time with your friends and you want to be more social because you have a lot more of that like oxytocin flowing through you, which makes you want to be around people more. And so that's the perfect time to plan outings with your friends or to have a girls night or, you know, a family night with, you know, people coming over and you play games or whatever. And so that's the perfect time for that. And then the luteal phase, you notice that, hey, my body is slowing down some and it's craving rest and it's craving, you know, nourishing broths and it's craving that I go for a walk instead of run six miles. And it's really craving some alone time and some self-care. And I don't want to work as much during this phase. I just really want to rest more. So you start following that. And then when you get to your menstruation phase, you may notice that you don't want to do anything at all. You want to lay in bed and you want to, you know, be more in tune with self-care and maybe doing some meditation and some journaling and, you know, nourishing your body through different foods that, you know, normally you don't want or crave, but now you are. And that you want to just lay at home on your couch under a cozy blanket and watch binge watch your favorite TV shows. And once you start learning those your cycles and how they work for you and what you want to do during each one, you can lean more into embracing that and flowing with how your body works and give yourself some grace for the times when you don't want to be out hustling and bustling and you don't want to be with your friends and you just want to lay on the couch. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, you need that. It's absolutely imperative that you get the rest that you need 
Because if you don't, again, your body can't heal. So tracking your cycles is really, really good for you overall. Um, Your menstrual cycle is your fifth vital sign. We always look at blood pressure, respirations, heart rate, pulse, all that stuff, right? Oxygenation, we look at those. And those are great. And those are good points to know. But the other point that you need to know if you are in a body with ovaries that's having a menstrual cycle is your menstrual cycle. If your menstrual cycle is out of whack for whatever reason, and you can tell that because you've been tracking it forever, and now you realize that, hey, this phase is getting shorter and that one's getting longer, that is a clear indication before any vital sign changes happen that something is awry in your body and something is missing and that you need to correct it. And that helps so much more than any other vital sign we can have. The other vital signs usually are late signs for those of us with ovaries. They really are. By the time we get high blood pressure, we already have like something set in. By the time that shows up, it's late in the game. Whereas we could have known something was going wrong earlier because now my period is seven days long and it used to only ever be five. So why is it extended? what's going on inside my body. So it's very imperative that you know your body inside and out. So that means sexually, intimately, and physically by tracking your cycles. You are the best expert on you. And don't let anybody else try to tell you that they know more about your body than you do because they don't. And so that is it. (laughs) Those are the keys to happy, healthy hormones. I hope you really enjoyed this series. This is pretty much a very brief outline that I go way more in depth um, with all of my clients and have a roadmap to follow and all that stuff. So if you are interested in saying, hey, I really um, have been, this is interesting. I really like this. I think it could really help me, but I'm feeling really overwhelmed and lost as to how to integrate this into my life and how to like start these changes or anything like that. Um, that I highly recommend that you come join me for my welcome to wellness group program. This is a 12 week long program where we dive really deep into all of these things that I talked about and that you basically get a personalized protocol to follow that will help your body and your specific needs to integrate these and get your body back where it should be, where we learn to stop fighting our bodies and learn to embrace them and work with them, where we learn skills before pills so that we have the skills that we need when things go wrong and where we learn to speak the language of our body so we know what it needs when it gives us a symptom. And at the end of the 12 weeks, you will be more equipped than you have been in a very long time to handle whatever your body throws at you and learn to work with it. And you can say at the end of the program, welcome to Wellness Body. I would love if you join me. The next round starts December 4th and we'll run through March. It'll actually be 14 weeks instead of 12 weeks this time around due to the holidays in December that many of us celebrate. So you actually get two extra weeks than normal as kind of like a bonus. Um, there's, these are small groups that only allow 10 people in at a time, as I like them to be small and intimate. It comes with a group private chat that is not on Facebook. It's in my client portal, which makes it um, more easily accessible for those who don't have Facebook. So you don't have to get Facebook for this if that's something you don't want to do, or if you're not on it and you know, not interested in getting on it. That's fine. It comes with a lifetime gratitude journal. It comes with a massive workbook and um, like welcome packet that gives you everything you need to get started. It comes with 12 weekly group sessions. It comes with um, a one-on-one in-depth consultation with me, personalized herbal remedies that are formulated just for you, your natal chart and how your body is working and functioning and what it needs. And obviously group support and one-on-one private support with me as needed throughout the program. It is absolutely fabulous. I've had great success with clients going through this with me. Um, 
they said they found the support and just having other people that are dealing with very similar health issues going through the same thing has been so helpful for them and their healing. And I would love it if you joined us. I will put a link in the show notes. This is an application um, program. This is not for everybody. And so you will need to fill out an application. I will go over these applications and then reach out to um, schedule discovery calls if you are a right fit for the program. And then we will chat more in person and get you enrolled. So I would absolutely love it if you came and joined me and everybody else on that. I currently have nine spots still available and these do tend to fill up fast. So if this is something you're interested in, I highly recommend you fill out the application ASAP so you don't miss your chance for this round and have to wait again until March to start the next one. So I would love to see you there and I hope you come and join me and everybody else so that you too can say welcome to wellness and I will chat with you guys later. Love and light. That's it for another great episode of The Herbal Iyer. Tune in next week for more valuable content with your host, Iyer Atla.